Welcome to Verity House Inspired. This episode is all about basil, an unassuming herb with a legendary secret. In the Pixies Potager, basil grows in fragrant abundance, climbs down the sides of the garden pots to tiptoe to the nearby beds and test the other guy's soil, and or waves spires of aromatic purple flowers in the air to capture the pixies' attention, which they always do. It was during our quest to become proficient in understanding our plants that we set about to investigate our favorite happily prospering herb and immediately found an array of eyebrow-raising skeletons, a terrifying tale, and some questionable escapades hidden cleverly in its closet. How their delicious and seemingly unpretentious herb had such a colorfully peculiar and clearly contradictory history without them knowing anything about it was intriguing enough for the pixies to demand we find out more about this plant forthwith and without one more leaf being incorporated into any of their meals. And so, like all good stories, we began with Once Upon a Time. A legendary creature roamed the earth whose gaze could cause death and whose breath could scorch the earth as it moved over it. It wasn't his stature that made him terrifying as he was no more than 12 fingers in length, according to Pliny the Elder, and wore a white mitre or crown upon his stately but venomous head as he glided regally in a mostly upright position across the ground. His parentage was questionable, as some believed him to have been hatched from a cockerel from the egg of a serpent or possibly a toad. However, this was merely supposition, as no one was brave enough to inquire of his origins. The ancient Greeks named him Basilisk, as it meant king, and the very mention of his name sent chills of terror through the bravest of men. The only way to combat a Basilisk was to turn its own gaze back upon itself with the use of mirrors on the shields, or as it turns out, by making friends with a weasel and inviting him to the fight. The very smell of the weasel was said to be enough to kill the creature. Unfortunately, the weasel never made it out to take his victory lap. The fragrant basil leaf was the antidote to the venom, stare, and breath of the ferocious creature. The Romans assured us, and rue could be used to kill it in a confined space with some effort and no personal contact. However, according to legend, many men, women, and children, and even landscape, who had no basil, rue, or weasel to their names, were laid waste by the terrible serpent-like creature. One can presume, by the obvious lack of modern basilisks, that the disagreeable beast ran afoul a magnificent patch of wild basil and rue, which was brimming with weasels, and ceased to exist altogether, at least, this is my theory. The pixies were exceedingly relieved that they had so much basil growing in their garden and that the basilisk was no more, but they did think the absence of rue in the garden ought to be corrected at once, just in case. But there was still more to the story of basil than simply being an antidote to a would-be Harry Potter villain with historical context. Basil, with its more than 5,000 years of cultivation, and all its more than 150 variations has an even more bizarre tale to tell, and if it were to have a catchphrase, it would most certainly be, it's complicated. The unassuming little herb has been found in ancient Egyptian tombs, in mummies and burial rituals, and was planted on graves in ancient Persia, Malaysia, India, and Greece. Though some would be quick to suggest that China's Hunan province shows significant evidence that basil originated there, others insist India is where basil's real origin story unfolds. As I wasn't there, I will let you decide which origin seems most reasonable to you. In India, the basil plant is considered sacred and implemented in the warding off of evil, with Hindu tradition utilizing holy basil, or Tulsi basil, as a purifying herb with the power to protect and represent love and eternal life. Basil sprigs were placed in the hands of dead loved ones to facilitate a safe journey to the other side. The Greeks and the Romans, on the other hand, had intense unpleasant feelings about basil overall, and their seed packets for the aromatic herb read, 
plant with much cursing and insults between the Ides of March and the summer solstice for strongest growth, or something like that. The Pixies arched eyebrows at the very idea of raising their voice, let alone cursing at their plants. This nonsense was simply not to be entertained, and their disapproval of the ancients' gardening methods was written all over their faces. Dios Corides, a physician of Greek descent who served in the court of the Roman Emperor Nero and who made the very first attempt to classify poisonous herbs, animals, and minerals, and is considered the father of pharmacology, observed that in Africa basil was taken preemptively to relieve the sting of the scorpion. He thought this a bad idea, as it would dull the eyesight of the individual. The physician Galen, whose second century development of the prognosis of disease through the use of empirical evidence rather than through spells and rites, agreed that internal use was simply not the thing. According to the Roman naturalist and botanist Pliny the Elder, in his book Historia Naturalis, Chrysippus, a Greek Stoic known for his skill in logical thinking, also had absolutely nothing good to say about basil, and rather than say nothing at all, as is commonly advised in polite company, he made it quite clear that he thought basil to be injurious to the stomach, urinary tract, and eyesight, adding for good measure, and in case anyone cared, that it was also responsible for insanity, lethargy, and liver troubles. And having covered all his bases, he rested his case. At this point in our studies, our favorite herb was beginning to take on a rather sinister air, and if it had had a mustache, it would most definitely have been twirling it. And then, what was already bad got distinctly worse, with Pliny the Elder continuing that others had confidently confided that if one was to pound a bit of basil and place it beneath a stone for reasons entirely unknown, it would breed scorpions. Or, if one was to randomly lay the basil in horse dung, venomous beasts would be bred. And according to Viovidus, if basil was consumed as a food, you would end up as a breeding ground for lice. All of which Pliny, now known as the Pixies' favorite Roman, strongly disagreed with. The Pixies glanced nervously around at the ground around their basil to make sure no stones or horses' dung had accidentally made its way into the potager and urged me to continue. Finally, Pliny confirmed that the following period saw a robust and righteous defense of basil arise, rebutting all the former nonsense and asserting that basil indeed lived up to its name as the king of herbs, and was useful in curing a myriad of ailments, particularly when infused in a combination of wine and vinegar. How very Roman of them. Meanwhile, Italians created basil pots specifically for the growth of the herb, which graced windows and doors throughout Italy and were single-handedly attempting to redeem basil's tarnished reputation by whipping up culinary masterpieces and using its branches as symbols of love. And while sweet basil would soon become synonymous with Italy, Portugal and Romania also joined in on the love fest and cleaning up basil's reputation. Elsewhere in the Mediterranean, Legend has it that Alexander the Great introduced basil to Greece, or that the Empress Helena crushed a plant underfoot after discovering it at the original site of the crucifixion of Christ, and had the herb brought back with her, planting it into her own garden and declaring it a holy herb. Either way, Greece embraced the leafy aromatic wholeheartedly. A few centuries on, in Europe, pesky old rumors were being given new life in the publishing of Culpepper's Complete Herbal. Culpepper, a prominent English herbalist, botanist, astrologist, and physician in the early 17th century, adhered to the premise that every like draws his like. And as Basil could draw the poison out of a venomous scorpion sting, he reasoned it should be avoided at all costs. To back up his analysis, he related the fact that Hilarius, a French physician, had affirmed upon his own knowledge that an acquaintance of his had too frequently smelled basil and had been stricken by a scorpion being bred in his brain. As I'm certain you are aware, an untruth can travel the world before the truth gets its pants on. Imagine just how fast the old scorpion in the brain theory became the commonly held belief of concerned Europeans everywhere. And despite the conspicuous absence of a brain-breeding scorpion epidemic sweeping the continent, 
the rumor carried weight for longer than a hot minute. From the English living in India using wooden basil necklaces to keep away lightning and electrical impulses as prescribed by the Hindu religion, to Napoleon swearing by the spicy scent of basil leaves, which he was certain helped him in his strategizing in battle, and the Victorians who tucked sweet basil into posies to convey best wishes, or common basil to relay hatred, basil has a long and storied past. Thankfully, modern research has more than redeemed the much maligned basil plant and shows the tasty leaves to be packed with antioxidants such as lutein, zeanthinins, and beta-carotene and brimming over with antibacterial properties. It contains a compound called eugenol, which helps to fight free radicals that can damage cells. Basil also has a noticeable effect on blood sugar according to studies, has shown promise in lowering blood pressure, cholesterol, and triglycerides, as well as containing magnesium to improve blood flow through muscle relaxation. Perhaps it will come as no surprise to those who love the fragrant little herb. It can help alleviate anxiety and depression and has the ability to bring mental clarity while lowering the risk of age-related memory loss. The essential oils in basil's leaves are known to lower inflammation and protect against bacterial infections, as well as being used for a millennia to draw poison from bites and ease the heart's discomforts. For such a controversial little plant, it certainly packs a wallop of health benefits, and I suspect basil's reputation has been well and thoroughly redeemed by modern researchers. At this point in our investigation, our emotions had been all over the place, and we had ended up on such a high note that the old scorpion in the brain antidote was all but forgotten in the pixie's enthusiasm to adopt more basil plants who were currently homeless and fill the potager as well as the kitchen with this helpful and healing little herb. So off we hurried to a nursery where the pixies remembered seeing a type of basil they did not yet have and who had been marked down for quick sale and brought the little deers home. Containers were filled with organic potting mix and worm casings as basil loves a well-drained and nutrient-rich soil and abhors wet feet, a very real predicament if you live in Louisiana. Well-established basil enjoys regular harvesting, which consists of pinching off the tops right above a set of two leaves which sit opposite one another. This consistent harvesting will give your basil a renewed vigor and cause it to bush out beautifully. It also adores the sun, but we have found that if you live somewhere where the mid-afternoon rays are akin to the basilisk's gaze, a shade cloth will keep your basil carefree and productive without attempting to bolt. With the new basil plants tucked into their pots and the garden watered and tended, it was the perfect time for pixies to enjoy the fruit of their labor and to share a few of their favorite creations from their basil kingdom. A quick trip was made to gather fruits and veg that were not currently available from the pixies' own garden, and once home, aprons were donned and baskets retrieved so that masses of bright green, variegated, and purple-tinged basil leaves could be gathered and made into a lovely meal for the occupants of the little house.
In the end, the Italians and the ancients of India, I think, understood basil the best. And in the little house, the love of the complicated but delicious herb continues unabated and unaffected by the revelation of its scandalous past. A very important part of the rewilding of the pixies involves being intentional about passing on generational knowledge, as well as exploring and gaining new knowledge from others' experiences. This newly acquired information is then trialed or practiced until these skills become comfortably our own. It is no less important for pixies to own their information and skills than it is for the taller folk in our home. And so we attempt to give the whys, the wheres, the hows, and the what fors that are necessary for information to go from abstract to personal. The traditions of creating meals to share with our family and friends are some of the ties that bind us, not just to generations directly before us, but also to generations past. The love of cooking, laughing together, and enjoying a meal intentionally and lovingly created is a thing that connects our souls. The dear voices of my past, whom the Pixies never had the opportunity to know and love, can still be heard through scrawled recipes and stories that carry them forward into generations to come. This is, I suspect, a very human desire, to want to pass on precious pieces of our experiences so they become an intrinsic thread in the tapestry of our children's stories. And while I have no personal tales of ghostly beasts with withering stares or scorpions where they ought not to be, thankfully I do think these moments of exploration, discovery, and creating together will make a fine strong thread to bind the pixies' tapestries to our own. Thank you for joining us in our adventures. The recipes which inspired the pixies can be found in the description, and we hope you will enjoy trying them in your own kitchen and that you will let us know if you do try them. Please consider liking and subscribing to our channel as it helps us to continue to grow in more than one way. See you next time. They that sow courtesy reap friendship, and they who plant kindness gather love. Saint Basil, 